what's happening right now, everybody's selling off all their cows and everything. We can't help it. You know, us Texans can't help it. When you got three, four hundred thousand head of cows, and I mean, that's hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of hay if you were going to try to keep them through this drought and through the winter. Just dry powder. He said a normal year, you're going to need about th four to five bales per head of cow, but you'll have to increase that by a couple if it's a drought situation. Yeah, normally where I'm standing right now is I would have to, I, I'm like 10 feet underwater right now. Hello, my friends. It has been a while since I've been in the front of the camera, but I wanted to give y'all a weather update. Dry, dry, dry. We are over at the ranch property today. This front field's not too bad. I have put the cows back there for about, oh, three weeks or so, and they've grazed that pretty stinking flat down. Tomorrow, I'm going to be letting them come up here, and they probably have a good solid month of grazing up here. Maybe two months, I don't know. But at the rate of this drought and the heat, it will be sucking the living daylights out of this field, and it already is. As you can see, the little bits of goat weed that have popped up is where I had where I actually had trashier hay last year, even though the guy told me it wasn't trashy hay, but anyway. But the rest of the field's pretty weed free. This side of the field, for some weird funky reason, always gets weeds, I don't know why. My John Deere brush hog is still at John Deere getting fixed. Praise the Lord for insurance, right? Anyway, weather is dry. Uh, I see no relief, pretty much, um, even though Ryan Hall's saying different, but. No relief whatsoever. Grasshoppers, as you can see. I don't know if you can see them, I can hear them. When you just walk through this field here, the Lord blessed us. We have about, we have about 30 bales here, y'all. Actually, technically 28. I already fed two bales to the cows this year. Crazy, right? And it's only uh, July. We were slightly by probably only two weeks. You ever hear the saying, buy hay and buy hay in May? Well, we were dumb and we didn't buy hay in May. We were, but we had no idea that this drought was coming. We've been scrambling. I've been running around like a chicken with its head cut off, scrambling, trying to get hay for my cows because I, I know I'm going to have to feed hay earlier this uh, year if we do not get some serious mad rainfall. Um, right now, one inch, I mean, one inch of rain would, would be a blessing from the Lord. But I was talking to a friend and he was saying there's Texas, at least in this area, East Texas, the moisture content in the ground, um, four inches down or six inches down is only 6% moisture, which is practically nothing. So um, it's just dust. This used to be super, super lush here. And you know, as you can see right there on Buddy's, I mean, it comes up to Buddy's knees, but what's been happening is even the taller grass, since it's off the ground, it's just toasting it down. We've been looking and looking and looking. Every day that goes by, the hay prices keep skyrocketing higher and higher and higher. So everything on Craigslist is over $125. Well, it's over $100 a bale, but everything I, everywhere else, and even on Craigslist too, is it's all been $120 plus a bale um, in the Texas area. You'll have to go out to Louisiana and anywhere else except for Texas pretty much <laughs> even though everywhere else is in a pretty good drought but Texas ha is pretty much I mean struggling pretty much the most people are selling off their cows by the millions it's very sad y'all so anyway the Lord blessed us <laughs> outstandingly because I think what was gonna have to happen if I couldn't find any hay for a reasonable price. I'm not paying $120 a bale. Not happening, I'm sorry. I, I, I'll jeopardize a couple years of having to regrow back my herd then spend all this money just to keep a couple cows around. I got about 20 cows. I got about 20 animals going into winter that are gonna be on hay. 15 or 16 of them are gonna be cows. So I'm gonna need roughly around 70 bales or so. Um, drought situation wise, hay has been going so, so fast. So if somebody has hay one day, it'll be totally sold really, really quick. Um, even if it's kind of more expensive because people are just buying it up as fast as they can. We got some inside information. 
some contacts. We don't work for the FBI or anything, but anyway. We found hay for 75 bucks a bale. Delivered, delivered. And that is amazing. It was 70 bucks a bale. He's like, I'll charge you um, five more bucks a bale um, to drop it off at your place. I'm like, that is awesome. So we're getting 40 bales delivered today. You can do the math on that. So it's definitely a chunk of money, but um, it's better than it being like probably double that. So, or triple that. So anyway, y'all, just be praying for all of us Texans out here. I know we've all been praying for rain. I've been praying for rain personally, and man, we, we need it terribly. If I pan over here to this guy's field, I mean, it's gone. There is nothing. It is chewed down to the nub and the grass ain't growing. This guy over here bombs his with Roundup and that's even looking sad. You can round that thing up all day long with hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of Roundup, but that don't water it. So that's gonna be burning up pretty soon here in about a month. But it is just dry. Us boys have been on a construction job and we were working in close to 110 degree weather. I mean, it is smoking hot um, in some of these areas, but um, it's been over 100 degrees for about two weeks straight. And I mean, that is rough on um, everything. We have really been feeling it over at the over at the stead. Um, we have loads of fruit on stuff, but I mean, it is drying up quick. The wells already the our shallow well has already ran dry, um, and it only it re it's been uh, filling up slower and slower and slower. So we're gonna have we've been kind of rationing water. We have city water, of course, for our um, for personal you know for the house and stuff like that. So that's fine, but. You know we still pay for that but yeah it's just man it's dry i would like to hear y'all's thoughts in the comments down below do you think this drought is man-made personally i think it is man-made i just think it is um the government hates hates beef farmers and they absolutely hate that we the people have power have all this power to be able to feed ourselves and feed ourselves and feed the large community here in Texas. And they absolutely hate that. So what can they do? Ah, uh, you know, with uh, all their stinking block out the sun, junk and everything, all they got to do is spray and do all their monkeying and they can make it not rain. And it's already, <laughs> it's already proven that they can do that already. They've done it several other times of making uh, doing it on islands and stuff and making it it's funny all making these, it all these days it's been no clouds in the sky yep which is funny because all the hot days i mean it's kind of obviously like no clouds in the sky of yeah. course it's gonna be hotter but it's funny how this drought came, drought came along when there's like no clouds in the yeah, sky yeah yeah like, absolutely no clouds praying. um all the all the texans around here they're like what's happening right now everybody's selling off all their cows and everything we can't help it you know, us Texans can't help it. When you got three, 400,000 head of cows, and I mean, that's hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of hay if you were gonna try to keep them through this drought and through the winter. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna sell them off. And guess what? You're gonna sell them off with the rest of tens of thousands of other people, and you're gonna get bare bone prices for them. This is definitely falling right into place with um, the food shortages and everything. The food shortages plan, um, and the pandemic 2.0. So it's been, it's working epically. I mean, they've designed this beautifully and bravo and kudos to them that designed this because good job y'all. So anyway, <laughs> anyway, Lord's still good. At least for our little small farm, we've been blessed being able to get some hay connections and stuff like that. And we got a pretty stinking big tank on the property if you don't, if you're not from Texas that's a pond um, is a tank so anyway that will that has enough water to um, Lord willing get us all the way through a drought even if it didn't rain anymore uh, I've been seeing a lot of the ponds around here that are just small little ponds I mean they're like 1 16th of an acre they're only probably five six foot deep or so and I mean there there's one right down there and I mean it is probably only two, three foot deep now. And it's only gonna probably be another, we go without rain for another month, it's gonna be crispy dry. 
and these guys that have their cows in these fields here, there's no city water plumbed out to there. So I don't know what they're gonna have to do to keep those cows watered. Um, sell them off or move them to another lot where they can keep them watered. Um, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure what they're, what they're gonna do. Um, at least here we have a little, we have a little well and we have city water. If for some crazy, crazy reason, this, our big old tank back here dried up. It, it's about a three quarter of an acre lake back there tank and it's 10, 12 foot deep. Um, right now it's probably dropped about two foot or so. Um, so I mean quite a bit, but um, Lord will and the Lord will send some rain pretty quick. We got, got the old green girl here and she's biting at the bit to get this hay unloaded. So this is our super good quality hay. And the hay that we're getting, the guy was like, are you okay if it has a couple weeds? I'm like, dude, I don't care if it has a couple weeds in it. Um, the other thing that I was pondering too, which I wanted to, <clears throat> which I wanted to uh, tell y'all about as well. And I don't, I don't know, I've heard of people, it's just an idea to ponder. I've heard of people getting their cows to eat certain weeds that they normally wouldn't, like at all touch and they would just pour molasses on them and they'll eat them because you know it just tastes good. Um, so that's another thing that I was thinking about, even like goat weeds and stuff. You can do it on poke weed, it'll kill your cow. But on like the goat weeds and stuff, you know, um, in those kind of in those kind of brushier spots, you know, I could pull it up, put it in cattle troughs, uh, troughs and pour some molasses over it and let them eat it. Um, you know, just instead of pulling it up and uh, letting them and burning it even though I probably should because then they'll distribute out all the seeds. I don't know what to do. I talked to one of one of the best cowboys in the state of Texas and he raises, people judge me for that saying this, but he raises Longhorn. I don't care, that's the most Texan cow you can raise. And he's went through the super bad drought in 2011 or whenever that was, a super bad made like $27 billion worth of damage in Texas. Um, it went on for a couple years or whatever. So he said a normal year, you're gonna need about th four to five bales per head of cow. But you'll have to increase that by a couple if it's a drought situation. There you go. We will be butchering three cows this, I think February sometime. So that they all get off the feed bill pretty quick. I mean, it's a long time till February, but that'll be three more off the feed bill and we'll be able to replenish the bank account. <laughs> if y'all are watching this video and y'all got cows and y'all haven't been thinking about hay or anything, I would, boy, I would be hurrying as fast as possible because it is so, mm, it's gonna be bad. Really, 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 really bad if um, you don't get any hay. I know another, farm they've been farming for eight years or so and they got 50 head i did the math on theirs they need a at minimum at minimum bare minimum just a normal winter 300 bales they just keep their cows weight on them and everything you know and uh yeah so i told him about this guy with the hay he just bought a big old barn full of hay um but i mean even if the barn could on, if even there's barns around here that'll hold four or 500 uh, round bales. And these are Texas size round bales. Those round bales, those round bales there are 1600 pounds. Um, so these aren't no little Northern round bales. When we went up North, I went and saw their hay bales. They're like 500, 800 pounds. I'm like, those are like toothpicks, toothpick hay bales compared to Texas hay bales. So anyway, these are, you know, legit size hay bales. And that would be, that would, that's the other thing though too, is that, you know, four to five, 1600 pound hay bales. Anyway, I put, I put out two round bales back here and they ate them, I just looked back here and they ate them down in like four days, I think, or less. I mean, they're gone, it, there's nothing there. They'll be fine for tonight. I guess we'll see if y'all have any tips or tricks in the comments down below how to stretch hay, how to, you know, how to feed your cows and things like that, you know, help other people out in the comments down below um, as well. Uh, we're all going through this together. I know it's not just Texas. I don't want to get any flack for that. I know it's 
a lot of the Midwest and some, even some of the eastern states too, um, southeastern states, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. Just keep praying for rain, I guess. Anyway, he be here. Hey guys, here. Super sweet. doing so it's been an hour and a half almost yeah almost two hours now got the rest of my schoolwork done and got her got her pretty hay here some of it he did say he's sorry about it but it kind of got scruffed up or whatever I don't care he's coming back down the highway now they had to pick up some sandwiches they were starving they said but anyway I'm gonna get a bail on the back end of me so I'm not so bouncy this time and we're just going to keep on unloading hay. This will be uh, this will be round two. Alrighty, so we are heading we are heading down to one of our to one of our local creeks, and we're going to see how dry she's getting. Um, it is a year long uh, creek, and the creek flows into well, it kind of morphs into a lake. So anyway. So as you can see, this whole road was totally covered in water. I still see water back there. I still see water back there. But I mean, it is, it's, yeah, let me see if I can, where it is. It's right up here, I think. All right, so, wow. yeah, but she ain't flowing. She is stacks low, low, baby. She is low, 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 low. I mean, dude, the last time I was here, that river was like up to the brim. I mean, it was like right here. Um, See that cigar right there? Yep, and there's probably- What was that? That wasn't- that was Yeah, there's alligator gar and there definitely could be gators actually. But as you can see, this thing- Man, it's low. Dude. I mean, I've never been able to, I mean, where I'm standing right now, yeah, normally where I'm standing right now is, I would have to, I, I'm like 10 feet underwater right now. She's dry. I mean, there's water here. And the thing is so ever so slowly moving, barely. I mean, and this is pretty much the biggest creek around here. We are over at our neighbor's property with all the, outstandingly beautiful longhorn, probably the most beautiful longhorns in Texas. We're checking up on them. As you can see, this field has seen better days. Just to give you some perspective here, that's what we're dealing with here, y'all. Pretty much to the ground and just dry powder. As you can see down here, his pond is getting low. If you go back in Google Earth, I can actually look back when they were having that real bad drought. And I mean, it was just a little puddle. It pretty much dried all the way up to the extent he said he was able to drive his, he was feeling spunky one day and he, uh, he tried to drive his side-by-side -side across the um across the pond and uh got it stuck or whatever and it's really hard to get one of those hondas stuck it took like the tractor and the pickup truck to get it out and i think they got the pickup truck stuck when they were trying to pull it out it's kind of funny looking back but not funny then but as you can see That's the, the pretty bull war wagon hi buddy hopefully 
hot days don't make you angry. He's a big boy. Now let's see, where Lucy? Lucy's up there, near the white and black one. Way up there, there's Lucy. But I don't know if that's, we're not gonna try to get any of them upset here. I don't want them getting up because of me bothering with them, but this tree, as you can see, is a is a uh, crab apple, crab apple, I guess, or a horse apple tree, and this one's another one too. But Look at that wild, wild um, plant, it almost looks like quinoa, but it's not. Yeah. You can boil that in water, dip it in, and then you can use horse apples to hear the dye to it. Ah. Man. Look at those cracks. I mean, it's like dry. So dry. Is it a geo? Ah. Look at that. Just pick this up off the ground. Um, we found a couple over here, but uh, wash it off here. Look at this thing. These things are the coolest thing in the world. Some people call them alien eggs or whatever, but they're they're pretty cool to find. See how it's perfectly round like that? It's called a geo. Alrighty, so we got all 40 bales here. As y'all can see. There they be. Praise the Lord, we got them all done. I'm done for the day. I'm gonna go chill out. These brothers are gonna go hang out with some friends this evening. We will catch y'all. We'll see y'all later. All right, bye-bye.